What's up everyone and welcome to FAQ 127 Triple camera Ola I have Very news <laughs> Very very big news No, uh, I don't have any news Not really Except That I got my first Noise complaint One of the offices nearby here Had a complaint about me playing guitar I'm just not sure when that would have been Do you see this, by the way? The little curly, curly thing here? This was actually made by Devin Townsend He did this He took this loose little string and Did it like this And it's been there since, like this I don't know why he did that Maybe that's like a sign of dominance Over another guitar player it's When you spin the string like this <laughs> Over your tuner Let's just roll with the FAQ, that's why we're here And uh, that's why you're here Nathan Rogers, you like Dream Theater, why have you never commented on BTBAM? Oh, what, what band is this? I think it's Between the Buried and Me, yes, okay There's so many BTBAM and BT... BVB... BCP... PCP... Uh, HTV So you're saying Between the Buried and Me and Dream Theater are similar? I have no idea actually uh, Maybe I should check him out I know Marco of... Uh, of uh, The Haunted He's been uh, trying to listen to them Okay, this is genuine, I have no idea what they sound like I think they're probably some type of progish thing, I guess Since you're saying that since I should listen to them because I listen to DT This is from 2015 I have no idea what uh, year I'm supposed to look into To be honest, this actually sounds a little bit like current Dream Theater Even the vocals kind of remind me of James Labrie What's up with this guy, by the way? He's... Come on, the door is open It's a pull door, not a push door You can see that Wow, that's pretty cool, actually Okay Some core vocals Mordecai, okay, let's listen to this This is 2011 What? Is this the same band? Just a side note, this is not like Dream Fitter. Just saying Well, at least I haven't heard Dream Fitter sound like this, that's, that's for sure What's this? Maybe they changed their uh, sound What's this? 2007 What? This sounds exactly like Dream Fitter, basically Oh, uh huh Huh Okay, okay Well, now it's safe to say I've listened to Between a Bird and Me And to be honest, I have no idea what to think <laughs> I will most definitely check out more of this This had me intrigued a little bit uh, I haven't actually listened to him Or even, you know, taken time to listen to him But I, I think I will now Thank you so much for the recommendation there, Nathan Rogers Simon Sulik Hola, what do you recommend? A small tube amp or a Boss Katana? Great question, last FAQ, hello I talked about bringing a, like a Boss Katana or a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier to a deserted island If the question is asked like this If I would recommend a small tube amplifier or a Boss Katana I would most definitely recommend a small tube amplifier in this case I mean right now, the small tube amplifiers that we have on the market uh, Like the PRS MT15 and you know, the Rev G20 and you know, Fortin Sigil and uh, even the smaller, you know, EVH amplifiers I think they are incredible I think it's definitely the way to go when it comes to the future of tube amplifiers We're probably just gonna see more and more of those smaller heads Because, I mean, no one's gonna need more than 50 watts anyway uh, Not even 25 watts I mean, you almost get everything except for the headroom of a full-fledged 100 watt amplifier in a small package that's not as loud as the 100 watt I would recommend that all day Tube amplifier I think the Boss Katana is a really good amplifier If you just want to have something to play through Like in the living room Or like if you're, you know, playing wherever uh, You know, just to have something to kick around And if you just want to cover 
all aspects of guitar playing if you want to have a really good clean sound or or if you want like a full-on distortion lead and all the effects and all that the katana is a better package for that but it's just way more fun to play a real tube amplifier in my opinion Martius MM, do you have a private lesson on how to play drop tuning in metal genre style for those who want to play freaking tight and play with passion? Okay, playing with passion, uh, you have to find someone else for that. <laughs> I mean, online lessons are on drop tuning in metal. Have you have you have you checked YouTube? Here's a video: How to use drop B tuning, six stream drop B metal tuning for beginners. There's a lot of drop tuning uh, videos out there. Just saying. I think the best way of just learning it is to just do it and then uh, play around with it basically the cool thing about drop tuning is that it opens up a lot of you know open chord things you always have a D in the bottom <laughs> you always have a D in the bottom <sighs> oh except when you're not in drop I mean, the good thing about drop is that uh, to have a root and a fifth, you basically just have to do... Just use one finger. So you have the root, the fifth and the octave. And then you have all the other three fingers to uh, do whatever you want. You can make like really big chords if you want to. So that's one really cool thing about drop tuning is that it frees up a finger and uh, you can do a lot of cool shit. 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 I like to switch up between drop tuning and standard tuning when I'm writing songs because it makes me, you know, write different or utilize different type of chords and stuff like that. So I think it's very useful to be able to switch around with that. Also, try some open chords as well, like an open C is very common to try out. That's what Devin uses, by the way. Oh, he was asking about the uh, freaking tight play with passion. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Sorry, uh, derailed. Booty McSneezestes. <laughs> hey Ola, seeing as you are a gamer and metal musician, what's the heaviest gaming soundtrack you have ever heard? Thanks for love, Chugs and hugs from Kelly. I think uh, we all can agree that the Doom soundtrack is very very heavy. Also the Wolfenstein soundtrack as well, which is also made by Mick Gordon. I just want to throw a little nostalgia bone to you guys out there. Did you ever play Destruction Derby 2? I think it was for PlayStation 1. <laughs> but that game had insanely cool instrumental metal tracks on it. I don't think I'll ever find it, but I'm gonna give it a shot and maybe I can get this video demonetized. We'll see. Ella Guitar. Hi Ola. Thoughts on Mateus Asato and Sir Guitars. Okay, Mateus Asato, YouTuber, guitar player. Uh, he's also playing a lot live, obviously. He's just an incredible guitar player. One of the few, you know, that you can just put a guitar in his lap and basically you have music for days or like feels for days. Same as Nick Johnston, you know, who can just sit and capture you with their guitar playing. I mean, his finger style playing is just mm, very admirable. I totally love Matthias Asado's playing. It's so tasteful, so, so, mm, so beautiful and very sexy time. About Sur guitars, I've only tried one Sur guitar and I don't remember where it was. I don't remember how I felt about it, but I really need to try one out, I think. Where do I reach out? to play a sur guitar, I don't know, but I would love to do it. Jeff Brooks, hey Ola, greetings from Seattle. When you record guitar, do you double track or multi-layer guitar tracks? If so, do you use different guitars for each track? Best channel on YouTube. Oh, thank you for the great work. Thank you so much uh, for that comment. That, that makes me really happy. Okay, I've experimented a lot with having quad track versus double track. In short, quad track means that you multi-layer guitars. You have a total of four rhythm tracks on your mix. Basically what you do is that you have two right tracks and two left tracks. And then you have double track guitars, which basically means one left, one right guitar. So you only record a rhythm track twice, okay? I've done both for different albums. The cool thing about having multi-layer guitars, like if you quad track and have four guitars, is that the guitar sound becomes really massive and thick and it becomes more of a force, really. A positive thing about this is that all the small nuisances 
about you know small quirks and missed sounds stuff like that that happens when you play and record kind of disappears when you're doing quad tracking I would say if you quad track the guitars will become more of a massive force than if you double track now a con with this is that same as it being a pro the nuisances and small missed sounds will disappear I think those things are what makes a recording you know personal gives you know the recording a little bit more of a soul and uh, a, a feeling of it being you know a real person playing the instrument so I'm more of a fan of double tracking you know you have one left guitar one right guitar and then when you need to for a chorus you have a center guitar or a melody guitar or something like that I think it gives an album more of a personality maybe that's the wrong way of putting it but I think it gives a little bit more personality to an album because you can hear on your left and right side the different all the small different mistakes I mean if you're like me I like to keep some mistakes in there because I you know I, you know I was feeling it and you know that's just my opinion about music I think when you have this more personality aspect to it or you know more of a groove and you know more a band in the studio kind of thing it feels more like a live setting than if you would record to uh you know super synchronized to a click or whatever so uh, that's why I choose to record double track it's also not bad because it saves a lot of time recording quad track is very time consuming because then you have to be perfectly tight with the second guitar otherwise it will sound like shit I would definitely recommend uh, if you are making albums at some point to try and record quad track and see if your music benefits from that or if you're good with just double tracking basically thank you for that question that was a really good conversation I had with myself Ola tasting shit! Alright, Ola tasting shit. So, I have members, right? Members are excellent. This is something called Clubmate. I have no idea what this is, but it got sent to me by Bacchus, one of my members. It says it's tea. It's his favorite drink. Now, you know, having a favorite drink doesn't really impress me that much. I know a lot of people like root beer. I hate root beer. That's what's so cool about taste. People can hate some things and uh, some people love it. I'm gonna try this. This is Clubmate from Bacchus. I love you, Bacchus. But if this tastes like shit, I'm gonna ban your ass. Oh, it smells like piss. Great. What is that? Basically, it's like uh, iced tea. A little more bitter, probably. Bacchus. What did you do? Maybe that explains the bitterness. Fucking hell. Matthias Lemis. Why is there no Swedish word of the day anymore? Oh shit. It's because I'm a loser. Swedish word of the day. Felurare. Loser. There you go. Happy? Piotr Golaki. Hi Ola, thanks for the coffee with Ola. Well done for inviting Kiko. My question is how much coffee with Ola is edited? Do you need to cut anything? Also, do you have any private conversations with the guests which aren't filmed? Uh, no, we don't have any private conversations at all. We are just quiet up until we sit in the chairs. Of course, we're having private conversations. We're talking while I go pick them up or whatever. But I'd like to not talk too much before uh, my coffees because I want to have that, you know, first conversation kind of vibe going on where, you know, it just keeps on going and we just talk about random shit. So I don't like to talk too much to my guests before we actually film the Coffee with Ola segment. About the editing, in the beginning when I made my uh, Coffee with Olas I did do some editing, I removed some of my uh, and long silences and stuff like that Nowadays, or like pretty quickly actually uh, I uh, found that I'm more confident in uh, my interviewing or in my speaking rather So today I basically don't do any editing at all unless it's like a really long pause of a me thinking you know I want this coffee with all thing to be something that's you know not necessarily f being felt as an interview more like a talk between two guitar players or two individuals and maybe that can spark a conversation that would probably not have happened if it was just like a press interview or talking to a guitar player I don't know how I'm doing let me know if you think I'm doing a good thing here Fabian Coriga how no uh about Chile Bauer, hi Ola, I just watched the FAQ and did I hear you say guitar? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. Lol. Picking up a oh, now. Okay, this guy Bauer, he's a member of mine. Oh my god, he has the worst accent ever. 
No, he's actually a lot of fun. He says guitar when he says guitar. I think we have a clip of that. I have to ask Robin about that. A guitar, 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 right? Guitar, 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 guitars, but guitar, guitar, guitar. But basically, what happened is that I'm starting to say guitar, and everyone in our member Discord starts to say guitar now because of this guy. So f you, Bauer. I love you. Uh, oh, he has a question too. Big King up. Do you watch any YouTube channel that are not about guitar or music? See you on Discord. Uh, I do watch some. Some of the channels that I watch that are not necessarily music related are Linus Tech Tips. I just like Linus because it's very casual, it's very nerdy. I'm not really into building PCs. There's just something about seeing a guy building computers that makes me really calm. So I like to watch Linus Tech Tips. Also, who else? You know, Marquez. I watch Marquez because he's, uh, his videos are so top-notch when it comes to the actual quality of the filming and I mean the, his videos are just so sharp looking and other than that I also like to search for you know camera uh, reviews and whatnot so I'll follow a lot of the photographer guys other than that nah I don't really follow that many channels those are basically it and then I just use YouTube to search for reviews about uh, you know cameras and whatever computer equipment or something like that I mean YouTube is such a fucking great tool Right? Riff of the day! <laughs> Should I make a riff of the day? Let's just make a... Because I have this beautiful clean sound today. Let's make a clean sound of the day. Okay, since we're in drop, let's do a drop clean riff of the day. So let's do Pantera Suicide Note Part 1, which is a very, very good song. <coughs> it's in, and it's in drop. I think this guitar is in drop C now, by the way. So it's standard D. That you have a drop C. So, Suicide Note Part 1 goes like this. And holy shit, did you see that? No, probably not. Take the pain away. Beautiful, Lola. Good job. Proponent of ancient wisdom. Porn is really bad for you, actually. It saps you of your testosterone, turns you into a pervert, and leads to depression. Not to mention it's addictive. Don't believe me, just take a look at Japan. Japan has a lot of issues with its young people, and a lot of it can be traced down to their porn addiction. Not all of their issues are because of porn. That is true. However, porn leads to a lot of issues for young men. Wonder why men are having less sex these days? Why would they, when they can watch girls' shit on the internet? Whenever they want. Wonder why testosterone is at an all-time low, and we have guys who never had a girlfriend and they are in their 30s. Germany is, has a porn problem too, but the worst I've seen was by far Japan. I can go on more details, but encourage you all to look into yourself. Wonder why men are having less sex these days? Uh, no, I'm not wondering this. <laughs> why are you making this comment on my channel? Uh, I. I applaud you that you want to bring this up for discussion, but uh, I think this might be the wrong channel. Unless you guys really want to hear why men have less testosterone these days. I'd rather just talk about guitars, to be honest. <laughs> Alien, Alien Taurus, I seriously cannot believe you, you two musicians. First, you sacrifice the amount and quality of the music you make for the sake of putting time in making videos. Then you make even those videos less and less actually music oriented and just talk about gear and jerking off or playing video games or whatever the f else you do. Now, you can't even bother to prepare for a few live shows or even a clinic. So basically, you don't even want to play with a backing track. It's offensive to know that you earn many times more than an average working musician who creates music regularly and tours and performs. I don't know if you've noticed, but I started this YouTube channel trying out gear. I can feel a slight faint 
of jealousy going on here and that, that's okay and uh, I'm not exactly sure what you want to say with this comment right here uh, that I don't want to prepare for a live show I think that's more like twisting my own words more than anything basically I think he's reacting to when I said that at this point right now that I don't want to do any touring with my solo material but still keeping it open when I release a second solo album or something like that and that it's offensive that I make more money than the average musician that regularly tours and performs right okay let me explain like uh, present time okay this is not the 80s anymore man <laughs> we live in an era where music is basically worth zero thanks to piracy and you know streaming services now that's a whole different discussion right there but basically the majority of you know earnings a band would make would be from touring and selling merch while touring at least that's for the average musician right there I'm pretty certain that on my level where you know I have all England the solo music and all that that I probably wouldn't you know pull a crowd big enough to uh, you know sell good amount of merch and you know to even make it profitable to be honest so if I would go out on tour doing this you know not being profitable that would be really irresponsible of me <laughs> you know I have a family to take care of and and believe it or not my family is priority one music is not priority one for me my family is priority one and with that said you know I'm still in a touring band I'm with The Haunted and we're making albums and we tour uh, here and there and even though we do that all the other guys need to have a regular day job because the music alone is nothing basically compared to a regular day job they need to have regular day jobs beside the music and the touring now YouTube and what I'm doing on YouTube and solar guitars obviously is my regular day job this is what I do to be able to support my family you know just like any other guy that needs to have a job to support their family so I think what you're saying here with your comment is very very unfair you're basically bashing me for having a day job and to wanting me to support my family and you're also bashing me for siding with my family before music no I'm not too sure about the age of this commenter right here it seems like you have a really good passion for music and I really admire that but as you grow older like me for instance you know priorities change you know I don't want to tour I don't want to be out there grinding I've already done that I mean back in the day I was all about the music because I didn't have you know Louise I didn't have a family or anything like that music was top priority but as you grow older your priorities change man Peter 1984 hi Ola I just became a member of this wonderful channel thank you for the awesome content my question for the next FAQ are has the new office improved your work and family life I am a huge fan of the Solar A series uh, guitars do you ship to South Africa yes we do ship to South Africa regarding improved my uh, work and family life yes it has most definitely done that it has definitely improved both my family life and work life so far I'm still working on the routines here you know of getting here every morning and going back and you know or pick up the uh, kids from school uh, so we're still working on that but all in all it's just been incredible for me to move here so now when I get back home from work I don't have any equipment to work anything at home I only have my laptop the problem I had was that I had a desk there with a computer on I would sit on that desk I don't even have a desk anymore at home so I don't even have any guitars at home only my acoustic guitar so yes it's definitely a bigger disconnect between work and family and I think it's really good for me to be honest and I think it's really good for the family as well because now it's a hundred percent engagement at home which was something I thought I had back when I was working from home but now when I have the office I see more clearly that I could have spent a lot more time with my kids and concentrate on what they're doing uh, if I just had it like this all the time this was most definitely the next step for my child and uh, it's been a long time coming for me to do this and I'm really happy that I just did it right now makes me really happy and that was the last question I think we had really good conversations in this video and I really hope that you maybe can bring something with you take it back home with you and you know work on it <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying I just want to say thank you so much for watching this thank you so much for subscribing to my channel 
you know, put a thumbs up your ass and uh, a good thumbs up, a really positive thumbs up up your ass. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section of this video and you might have your question answered in the next FAQ. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See ya. I just noticed this microphone has been pointing down towards my dick this whole time. <laughs>